Hi, this is your host, Sapna Bharti, and welcome to another episode of TFR Insight. And today we have with us co founders of Opsera, Chandra Ranganathan and Kumar Chukula. Chandra Kumar, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Swapna. Now, you are the co founders of the company. Tell me a bit about what problem you saw in the space that you wanted to solve that you created this company. Thank you, Swapnil. Um, again, uh, it's a pleasure to have, be on your show and thank you for your time. We founded Opsera, which is a continuous orchestration platform for next-gen DevOps. And uh, Opsera orchestrates tools, pipelines, and insights uh, by combining both choice of any CI CD tools and no-code automation. And the reason we um, founded Opsera was because we, as we built a private cloud, expanded it to multi-cloud in our past experience at Symantec and also validated at Adobe and Uber. Um, we found that there are two ways in which DevOps uh, is addressed today. Companies want to use best of breed tools across the DevOps ecosystem. However, there's a lot of complexity in, in manually integrating uh, and making all of those tools work. On the other hand, you can choose to have a, a single vendor solution, but that doesn't give you choice, doesn't give you flexibility, it locks you in with a vendor and you can't really uh, box developers into a single solution. So what we try to do with Upsera is to bring both of those together, which is to give choice as well as bring the choice together with no-code automation. And, and that was the genesis for Upsera. When we do look at uh, low-code or no-code altogether, what kind of uh, either developer, DevOps team or use cases you are targeting? Because today what we see is uh, no matter what kind of business you are, you have to be a software company. But at the same time, you know, it takes a lot of investment in, in building software teams. Plus, if you look at the whole cloud native ecosystem, there are so many open source projects that you have to get involved with. So it's as much as uh, it looks appealing and tempting, but it's a heavy challenge there. So talk a bit about the importance of no code in enabling customers to fast, you know, put their companies on the fast track of digital transformation or also allow new companies to enter the market without any overhead cost that goes into development? There are a couple of trends that uh, that we see, especially with the migration to multi-cloud as we speak. One is the proliferation of new technologies driven by adoption of serverless, infrastructure as code, microservices, containers. So that has also caused the need for more and more CI CD tooling uh, you know, in order to deliver software. Uh, there's a shift left uh, of security and uh, quality that makes them important to be uh, integrated at every level of your pipelines versus thinking about them at or post deployment. And, and then there's the need for holof, uh, holistic analytics versus uh, siloed analytics from different tools. And all of this makes uh, automation across your uh, software development lifecycle very, very important. And with Opsera, what we're trying to do is to integrate, uh, A, as I said earlier, provide choice of any tools that can be self-provisioned by choosing from a catalog or bring your own tools into the catalog. Uh, we integrate, uh, we provide uh, the capability to, uh, to build pipelines in a drag and drop manner without writing any code from a UI and integrate security and quality into those pipelines dynamically at, at any stage. Uh, and finally, we, pro we have a data transformer with Opsera that takes the data from all these diverse tools uh, and normalizes, contextualizes, and provides unified insights uh, and actionable insights across the ecosystem. So basically what this allows you to do is focus your time and resources on doing what is more important for, for the company, which is building and shipping your own core product versus building and managing these tools and pipelines, uh, which is very complex to do. You also mentioned security. So how do you ensure security there? Because security is becoming a serious or, you know, it's a serious consideration within, especially the cloud native world. It's no longer an afterthought there. How do you keep up with uh, all the vulnerabilities that are out there? Security by design is the principle that we believe in. And uh, as part of the DevSecOps and uh, we within the DevOps as well, right? As part of the various stages of the code that you move from uh, development to all the way to production. If you ins if you include the security at the early stage, the chances of you delivering the secure code in production is much higher. As a result of that, what we do is we integrate with four different categories of the security uh, aspects inside the pipeline. One is the stat static code analysis to make sure that there are no application vulnerabilities. Second thing is container security to make sure that we don't have any container vulnerabilities and the threat vulnerability management is the next one. The next one is vault. Last one is 
the dynamic code analysis. All of them are available as part of our continuous orchestration, where in which we also allow the customers to put the thresholds and gates for each step of the way and have approvals and notifications so that they know as part of the automated pipeline, if they fall adhere to certain controls and thresholds and gates, they will be able to move seamlessly without going through all the manual approvals that they have to go through today. And also changes the behavior of the developer and operations release team to ensure that they follow the guidelines to have a successful pipeline, successful deployment at the end of the day. So we also give metrics along with it, as Chandra alluded to data transformer. We ensure that we provide the visibility for the developers and security team, SecOps team, to see how the trend is happening with respect to all these four or five categories. Static code analysis and container model, are they going up, are they going down? Why it is going up? What is the action that they need to take? When we give the metrics, it's we want to give the metrics in a such a way that these are actionable insights, actionable dashboards, so that they have a way to uh, take an action and be able to remediate them quickly, and then be able to deliver the secure code as part of the pipeline, Opsera pipelines. In the stack, where does Opsera fit, and which teams uh, within the company um, you uh, not interact with, but help them so that we understand that if a company is looking at Opsera, what are they looking at and where in their stack and what times, uh, what teams uh, you are going to help there? Yeah, so think of Opsera as, a, as an abstraction layer on top of all the DevOps tools. We are an orchestrator, right, across tools, pipelines, and insights. So if you have to give you an analogy, think of Opsera as the mule soft of DevOps or the phantom of DevOps, right? Uh, and as far as uh, the persona, we are looking at two primary personas. Uh, and that is actually reflected by the two problems Opsera helps address. The first is velocity, velocity of um, building tools and velocity of creating pipelines. And, and that is more bottom up, right? Uh, and uh, DevOps engineers and software engineers are the personas we are looking to address by helping enable velocity. So we see uh, our primary persona being DevOps engineers or SREs who actually build the tools and platforms that can in turn be consumed by developers, uh, you know, for running and running their pipelines. So DevOps owns the platforms uh, without taking away choice and control from the developers. Now, when you look at visibility, which is on the other hand, uh, a top down requirement, most managers want to see productivity metrics, efficiency metrics, you know, uh, compliance metrics, etc. So we see dev managers, security managers, uh, quality managers wanting, uh, you know, uh, visibility metrics. So we're looking at it from those two aspects, DevOps engineers and, and developers for the tools and pipelines, along with logs, et cetera, and, uh, and the managers for, for the metrics. And, uh, and those are the personas we're looking to address with Opsera as well. We are in almost at the end of 2020. It's been a long year. I don't know if we should call it a year or a decade, whatever it is. Uh, what, what does your own roadmap look like? What, what kind of future do you envision, especially for 2021, especially because this pandemic, uh, cloud or digital transformation has become an urgency. You know, it's no longer, you know, when it's, no, it's more about you should have done it yesterday. So talk about how it's going to change things for not only the whole ecosystem, but also for, for Opsera as well. So give us a, a higher level overview of where we should be looking at from your perspective. Sure. Um... Uh, you're absolutely right. 2020 feels more like a decade and anything, uh, I mean, it's, it looks furthest from uh, perfection. 2020 is a perfect vision, but <laughs> if anything, the year was far from perfect. Uh, we see, or we've seen that uh, there's been an acceleration to cloud, like you said, uh, driven by COVID. Uh, as far as Opsera is concerned, our vision is to be that single pane for DevOps that allows you to choose any DevOps tool across any um category of DevOps uh, and also be able to provision tools, pipelines, insights uh, in all in one place, right? Uh, but we also uh, have other aspects to our vision. One is uh, there's a lot of different uh, opportunities to verticalize pipelines. So if you look at code product engineering, there's different use cases for pipelines, you know, uh, software engineering use cases with multi-language pipelines, uh, data science uh, use cases with AI ML ops being automated. And we're also seeing uh, IT use cases such as Salesforce release automation, ServiceNow release automation, and, and several other um, use cases within IT such as PLM, product lifecycle management. So we see verticalization of pipelines where we can offer a library of pipelines and allow pipelines to be added by others as well uh, in the future. Uh, and last but not least, uh, you know, to have an easy migration option from existing environments in, into 
uh, an ecosystem like Opsera. So that's uh, that's the vision that we have as we go forward. Awesome. Uh, Chandra, Kumar, thank you once again for taking time out today and talk about Opsera. And I look forward to talk to you again at some point. Thank you. Thank you so much, Swapnil, for your time. Much appreciated. Appreciate your time and the support as well.